Um, thank you very much for wonderful worship, ladies, and uh, thank you for um, leading us in communion. So it's, uh, it's really good that we can remember what Jesus did for us. And I'm hoping that this talk today will help us remember what Jesus did for us as well, even though it's all about David and Goliath in the Old Testament. So the title for this series, if you've been following, I uh, have actually been doing a series, in case you notice, um, and it was um, David, Man After God's Own Heart. And last time we um, were looking at the story of David um, before he met Goliath. So about a thousand years before Jesus came to the earth, David was anointed as the next king of God's people. <laughs> And Saul, who had been rejected by God um, due to his selfish at attitude, um, was still on the throne at this point. But uh, David had been anointed. And David had been summoned to Saul's court because Saul had a spirit from God which actually gave him a lot of anguish and hurt. And um, David could soothe Saul's bad moods by singing to him. And as you I'm sure most of you know, uh, David wrote a lot of the Psalms, which we'll actually look at next time I speak. Um, David had been given the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and actually that anointing of the Holy Spirit had been taken away from Saul. And if you're a Christian here today, you too have been given the anointing of of the Holy Spirit. He gives us gifts, doesn't he? The Holy Spirit gives us gifts. Just looking at these Easter eggs around. I think they're Easter eggs. Or bunnies, maybe. I don't know. But they, no doubt, you'll be giving kids or each other gifts of Easter eggs, or some of you will. Um, and the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. What do they include? Well, they include wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in tongues, and interpretation of tongues. So the Holy Spirit gives us gifts, but as we mature as Christians, hopefully we will start to produce fruit. Now I had a bit of a, an argument with a bird earlier this week, which was pecking at my plum blossom. <laughs> so I don't think we're gonna get a lot of fruit from there. Covered it all with stuff, but um, I think we're probably too late. Um, but the Holy Spirit gives us fruit. And those, that, that fruit includes love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So are we displaying those fruits? If not, why not? Think about that. Okay. So 1 Samuel 17 is where we're at now. If you have a Bible, you might want to read along with me. Um, it's probably one of the most well-known stories in the Bible. Um, but actually, although I wanted to show that cartoon for the kids to look at, it's for us as well. It's not just a kid's story. Um, we've looked at the summary already, so I'm not going to go through that in detail. But... Um, you know, you know the story already, what's happened. I think Goliath must have been a, a really terrifying figure. But actually, I wonder what was going on, because he was standing out there every day for 40 days, and the armies were just facing off, facing off and nothing happening, which seems a bit strange to me. I know 40 is a, a, a special number in the Bible, and it has other meanings, but it's, it's a long time for nothing to happen. And Goliath says to God's people, every day, choose a man and have him come down to me. This is verse 8. If he is able to fight and kill me, he will become, well, he will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Now that was an offer which actually would have saved a lot of death and destruction, wouldn't it? Can you imagine Zelensky and Putin doing that? 
no, we can't. It's not what um, would, you know, would happen. But it would have saved us a hell of a lot of destruction and terrible things happening, which is going on in Ukraine at the moment. But I do wonder if, although this was a, it's like a traditional way of solving battles, solving uh, difficult uh, conflict, uh, apparently it came from the Greeks and apparently the Philistines were related to the Greeks or descended from the Greeks. No, don't know very much about that. That's what I read. Um, perhaps the Philistines were actually not so strong as they looked. Um, they thought that this one-to-one -one battle idea was a good way of actually winning without actually going into battle, perhaps. And I think that's true with the devil, because the devil isn't actually as strong as we think he is. He's already been defeated. He's been defeated by Jesus on the cross. The devil doesn't have a hold on your life. He might seem like he does, but he doesn't have a hold on your life. Let me just um, look at the PowerPoint. Let's see if that works. Oh, no, I'm going backwards. So there's David fighting Goliath. And this is my first point. So the opposition, or the devil, is a lot weaker than he looks. He's already been defeated. There's no hold on your life. Um, in Luke 10, verse 17 to 19, the disciples came back to Jesus after he sent them out. Remember, he sent them out um, by themselves. And when they came back, they said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Now, we've got to remember despite his ultimate defeat, we've still got to take the devil seriously. He'll be constantly trying to undermine you and me. Uh, Peter says in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the truth. And James says, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yeah. So he's there, but he is a defeated enemy, but we've got to take him seriously. And I think, you know, sometimes, perhaps not so much now, but in perhaps more traditional churches in the past, the devil hasn't really featured. But that's what he wants. So interestingly, you know, I was saying that Goliath said, you know, choose a person, um, we will submit to you if, you, you know, if I die, basically. Uh, that's what Goliath was saying. Um, the Jews, the Israelites, didn't actually hold to that. They went out and they slaughtered the Philistines as they ran away. So they ran off, and just looking at that, I think it's pretty clear that they weren't as strong as they thought. They were relying on... Goliath to lead them. Even Saul was a weak leader. You know, he said to anybody, he said, anybody who kills the, the giant, I will give my daughter, daughter's hand in marriage and I'll exempt your family from taxes. So taxes were around even then. <laughs> never go away, do they? Well, they say two things certain in life death and taxes. <laughs> no. um, so this is what he promised. But actually, if you read later on, David, it did kill Goliath, obviously. Yeah. But Saul didn't give him that, honour that promise until much later when he then sent David off to do more and more battles, some gruesome evidence he asked for. You might know what that is, but I won't go into that. Um, and he killed all these other Philistines. And he, only then, after a long time, Saul kept his promise. So it's not surprising that the, Philistine, uh, sorry, the 
Israelites chased after the Philistines. They didn't have a really good leader at that time. Saul was not a good leader. And do you know who your leader is? It's not Dave, although I'm sure he'd like it to be. <laughs> and it's not me, it's not anybody, it's not Boris Johnson, it's Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, if you are a Christian, you have the strongest leader that you can possibly yeah. have. Yeah. Remember that. Now, it doesn't mean we should ignore Dave. <laughs> Or your bosses at work. I'm not sure about Boris Johnson. You might want to ignore him, but he is in charge. And, you know, God, God puts, raises leaders up, and you know, he, is, he is the boss, as it were. Um, so we can't ignore those, but we do follow Jesus. You follow Jesus. He went to the cross so that your sins could be taken away. Now, when David met up with his brothers, they thought he was just there to watch the action. You know, they didn't think they weren't too impressed with him. Um, when he said that he was going to go and fight the giant, they were pretty discouraging. Um, this was on the cartoon, but uh, in verse 28 it says, When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men about Goliath, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here, and with whom did you leave those few sheep in the desert? I know how conceited you are, and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. And I like David's response. He says, now what have I done? Can't I even speak? <laughs> which is something which I think uh, those of you with children would probably be familiar with. It's very, very easy to be <laughs> discouraging, isn't it? Encouraging people takes a bit of thought and a bit of effort. Now, we don't want to be forced about what we say. I don't want somebody to come up to me who thought this was an absolute, absolutely dreadful sermon and say, Pete, that was really brilliant, really enjoyed that, because that doesn't bless me, it doesn't bless you. But if you think it was quite, you know, not too bad, and you come up and say, great, that's going to be not too bad. <laughs> And in fact, last time I spoke, somebody did come up to me and they said, yeah, I've, I've never really thought about the Holy Spirit like that before. I didn't know much about the Holy Spirit. Thank you for talking that through. And I thought, no, stop my pride, stop the pride. But, you know, it's, it was, it's encouraging and we need to be encouraging. I think we are encouraging in this church. I think it helps that you know, we're a small church, but we are like family. Yeah. We really are. And it's such a, a blessing to have you around me and I hope I'm a blessing to you so. <laughs> so my next point is encourage each other and I, I, I just make a suggestion put it out there why don't you make a point of trying to encourage one person this week it doesn't have to be somebody in the church in fact it might be even better if it's somebody outside of the church encourage them because that is so counter-cultural isn't it that's not what we're used to so when the other people around David including Saul uh, doubted him David told Saul about his previous experience fighting off lions and bears and our previous experience is actually really important so don't dismiss what you've done in the past our previous experiences can help us grow as Christians and can be used to help other people. Yeah. Now, some of you may know that I've recently started a job as the training coordinator for the care company that I work for. Now, I was I've spent 25 years teaching and nine years doing care work out there. In fact, I was still out there this morning. Um, so my experience of teaching and my experience of care work, I feel, makes me suitable for this role as the training coordinator. And it's the same in our faith. Your experience that you've had in the past will help you in the future. Now, it might be your approach, how you've spoken to somebody about Jesus, and you found that that's 
had an impact, you can use that experience again. Or it might be perhaps you've had a negative experience. You've been to a church where everybody was just ignoring you. Mm. you know, new church. So how can you use that experience, that negative experience? Well, you know how that feels. So when somebody comes in who hasn't been to this church before, you can go up to them and make them welcome. I think we, uh, as a church, we do that quite well. Um, but, you know, that's something which we can use. So use your life experiences in a positive way. Now, David tried on Saul's armour, but it didn't fit. Not, you can't see that very clearly. It's another cartoon of um, poor old David with no you know, badly fitting armour. He took it off in the end, and he just chose some stones from the river to sling. Now, we are all different, aren't we? Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah, we are all different. So, the way that you talk to people about Jesus, or the way that you live, is going to be different to the way that I do it, or the way that I live. In fact, we have lots of different backgrounds. Uh, We have have Mexico. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're in your dreams, Phil. There we have Mexico, Zambia, uh, Pam's not here, uh, Zimbabwe, India. South Africa, India. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we're, we're multi, multicultural here. Um, but we're all part of the same family. Yeah. And we are all God's family. We're a part of his family. We are, we are his body. Um, in Romans 12, verse 4, it says, Just as each of us just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each <coughs> member belongs to the others. Yeah. Then in 1 Corinthians 12. Paul points out how ridiculous it would be if the whole body was just made up of a foot or just an eye or just a hand. He says, God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. So remember that you have all, you have been arranged by God within this body. Yeah. Okay, so you, you, nobody is any bigger than any other. So um, my next point: we are all different, but we all have a part to play. So you might know what your gift is. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit gives gifts. Perhaps it's for kids' work. So you've certainly got a gift for kids' work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're all different, so. <laughs> 25 years as a teacher doesn't mean I want to do kids' work. <laughs> so if you have been given a gift, or gifts, there's a nice picture of lots of gifts there, Tony and Anne, I can't see it, open them up and enjoy using them. Yeah. But your gift might be, say, supporting the church. Yeah. So even though you don't feel you're gifted to do kids' work, <laughs> and Sue says, can you come and do kids' work? You, need to you, you go and support Sue with that kids' work. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're still using your gift. Your gift is to support the church. In fact, I, I, we, when this church started, Dave and Sue said they were going to start the church, I almost immediately felt God say that we needed to join them um, to support them. And that I feel that's our role. Yeah, we're here to support Dave and Sue as they lead this church. And that means doing all sorts of things. Preaching, playing in a worship band, hosting, using the computer, not kids' work, 
Although Julia's been doing kids' work, making the tea and coffee. Yeah, so there's all sorts of things that we can do. If you... I mean, it's quite difficult in this church not to be asked to do something. <laughs> but if you feel that there's a need or you feel there's something that you can offer, whether inside the church or outside the church, yeah, yeah you might have a gift for something else which you can give outside the church. Please do that. Don't just sit on, on that. It's like those pictures of the gifts there. It's like being given this wonderful gift and you just say, oh, that's nice, and you don't open it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so please try and use your gifts. Okay, let me just read what I think is the key passage here. So this is 1 Samuel 17, and it's verse 45 to 47. It says, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that there, that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you, give, sorry, give all of you into our hands. That's a pretty uh, bold claim, isn't it? And... It is vindicated by what happened next. But it applies to us as well. We come against our enemies, the opposition, our culture. We come against it in the name of the Lord. The battle is already won. The battle is the Lord's. So, I just want to quote you. Quote you. Oh, hang on. Have I got a point? Yeah, there's my point six. So we, can, um, we can't succeed if we do things in our own strength. Yeah. It's, we can do anything through Christ. It gives us strength. Yeah. So David looked like he was going to lose, didn't he? But he won because the battle was the Lord's. And Paul says in to his letter to the Philippians, I can do anything through him who gives me strength. Something That sounds really good, but we do have trouble living it out, don't we? Or is that just me? <laughs> so I think we'll need to pray in a little bit that we know this in our lives more and more. Let me just give you a few quotes from... A guy called Phil Moore, who I do read from quite often when I'm doing these talks. I think he's a good, he's a good writer. I don't always, it doesn't always make me feel comfortable with what he says. But here's um, what he says about this passage in 1 Samuel. He says, Perhaps you need forgiveness and deliverance from a sense of guilt which looms like a giant on your conscience. And I was thinking perhaps you might hurt someone in the past. Don't try to be a hero and try to make up for it. Up, sorry, make it up to God on your own. Praise him that Jesus has stepped into the battlefield of your soul so that his blood has wiped away your sin and has delivered you from God's righteous judgment. Or... Perhaps you need deliverance from a sin for which you know you are forgiven, but you keep returning to that same old sin. There's a lovely phrase in Proverbs which says, like a dog returns to its vomit. That sin feels like a giant that cannot be overcome and is with you every day. Don't try to be a hero and resist sin through willpower alone. 
Praise God that Jesus has chopped off that particular Goliath's head so that you don't have to. Then surge forward with a shout of faith to use the sword of his word to tell sin that you're not a slave to it anymore. Or perhaps you need healing or provision or some sort of breakthrough. Don't try to be a hero and scheme your way into God's blessings. Don't bargain with God saying things like, oh, I'll go to church every week and I'll give to the poor if you heal me. Speak out the authority which has been given to you through Jesus' name and plunder Satan's camp through faith. As you do, you bring glory to God through your faith in Jesus, the mighty hero. I just want to add one more, which I thought about. Jesus tells us in the Lord's Prayer to forgive those who have sinned against us, doesn't he? If you've been hurt badly by others in the past, you need to forgive the one that hurt you, so that God can forgive your sins. Now that's hard, and it's definitely something that is going to be impossible to do in your own strength. It's like a great big giant. But remember, a lack of forgiveness actually goes against what God God wants. So I would say a lack of forgiveness is actually a sin. So as has just been said, praise God that Jesus has chopped off that particular Goliath's head so you don't have to, then surge forward with a shout of faith to use the sword of his word to tell sin that you're not a slave to it anymore. So let's just summarise. Ex-teacher has got to do a summary at the end. (laughs) If you're a Christian, Jesus is your strong leader who has already defeated the devil. Don't be distracted by other people or other things leading you away from your leader. Encourage each other. Think of some practical ways that you can do this. Use your life experiences in a positive way. Learn by your mistakes. Pass on your knowledge. Look out for chances to do this. Remember that we're all different and each has a part to play. Try out different things to find out what unopened gifts have been given to you. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Don't try to do it all in your own strength. Pray that we will know and understand this more and more. And Jesus has already fought our Goliaths for us and has won. Now, at the risk of extending, what I'd like to do... I know know we prayed already together, but I'd like us to take one or two of these points, you know, perhaps just one of those points, and for you to pray that God impacts you in some way related to that point. Because, you know, it's great. I really like standing here talking um, about Jesus. It really helps me to learn more and more. But actually... It's not a lot of point if you just think, that's fine, off (laughs) off you go and just carry on as normal. We want to change, don't we? We want to change and be more and more like Jesus. So we need to look at these things and think about them. So can I just ask you to pray just for a few minutes, perhaps by yourself or if you want somebody else to pray with you, ask, be bold. It's always difficult to step out, isn't it? Be bold. And... Just pick maybe one or two of those points that we can pray through. Thank you.